जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम वेलकम पाकिस्तानी जिन पुर्तगाल में तो आज हम लाइव किस लिए आए हैं हम आज लाइव इसलिए आए हैं जनाब कि आज हमारे साथ एक ऐसे पोर्टुगीज हैं जिन्होंने रिसेंटली पाकिस्तान का विजिट किया था और वो पाकिस्तान के बड़े-बड़े जितने भी पॉलिटिशियंस थे जो गवर्नमेंट में हैं इस टाइम और इसके अलावा बड़े-बड़े ब्यूरोक्रेट्स से इनकी मुलाकातें हुई हैं तो मैं आप सबको दिखाने के लिए यहां पे उनकी कुछ तस्वीरें शेयर करता हूं ताकि आपको भी पता चले कि आज के हमारे गेस्ट कौन है तो ले जी ये तस्वीरें देखें ये हैं डॉक्टर जोजे कालाजान ये प्रोफेसर हैं लुसोफोना यूनिवर्सिटी में ह्यूमन काइंड और टेक की जो यूनिवर्सिटी है तो इन्होंने रिसेंटली पाकिस्तान का विजिट किया था और ये जनाब आजाद कश्मीर गए हैं इनकी तस्वीर आप देख सकते हैं और जी वालेकुम सलाम शबा साहब तो इनकी तस्वीर आप देखें ये मिले हैं जनाब स्पीकर साहब से ये मिले हैं फवाद चौधरी से ये शिपिंग के हमारे मिनिस्टर हैं जैदी साहब उनसे मिले हैं और जितने भी ये चौधरी परवेज अलाई स्पीकर पंजाब असेंबली इनसे इनकी मुलाकात है तो ये जनाब काफी इंटरेस्टिंग टूर रहा था इनका और थोड़ा सा सियासी वाले से भी आपको बताऊंगा कि इनकी तस्वीर काफी वायरल भी हुई थी बाद में किसी ने यह कह दिया था कि यह हमारे जो पीएम इमरान खान साहब हैं उनकी एक यह जो वाइफ हैं उनके एक्स हस्बैंड हैं तो यह काफी खबरों में इनका चर्चा भी रहा है तो हम जनाब अब आपको मिलाते हैं प्रोफेसर साहब से हेलो एंड वेलकम भाई विंडोस ने और कालाजान कमस्ता तुद भाई तुद भाई Hello. All right. Uh, actually, as you know, I was asking you that uh, how many designations you hold, uh, and uh, it's a very long list. Uh, uh, I'm sorry I couldn't remember all this. Uh, so I must must uh, request you, please, if you could tell us that uh, how many designations you hold and what are you doing now. Okay. Uh, basically, my first formation was a, as a musician. When I was a teenager, I made the Conservatory of Music. Um, it was a, a wonderful time. Um, then I, I went to the university and I made the course of Oriental Studies. So I studied Sanskrit, Pali, and I specialized myself in the pre-classic Indian history. So I have to learn what is now about India and Pakistan in early times. I start studying for my 12 years old and I spend all my life studying the South Asia. Then I turn in history and archaeology, always facing uh, far east. And uh, I took uh, the my master and PhD on Portuguese history and discoveries. And because my 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 passion was Indus Valley culture I made my master and my PhD on Portuguese presence in Sindh, in Dabul, and in Tata. That was my PhD, uh, making the, the link between the Portuguese presence, commerce, and military strategy and climatic changing. So as far as I went, dealing on the study about climatic changing in Sindh and Multan, in fact, in all Indus Valley in Saraswati Valley, till 17th century, till now, I have a broad view about what is going on in Pakistan now, since before, and now in the future. I know what is going on. Uh, so I have a, a broad view on different fields, from history, linguistics, and climatic changing and strategy. I'm teaching uh, at my university on international um, relations, and security systems and ethics and history also but on the other side of the road i'm also in the faculty of science on physics 
quantic physics. Uh, for those who are not acquainted with, uh, quantic physics gives a lot of hints and uh, ideas and theories for applying um, science in social science and history and economy. So I'm working on this to find the best ways to save our skin. <laughs> um, and I think that we have a lot to, to do on economics, new economics, and new diplomatic fields and relations. Mainly because we are crossing a big um, crash in human affairs because of the quarantine and COVID is, is not good, but it's a, a good opportunity to make a revision on our styles of life and economics. So we have to see other kind of um, economic affairs, the way to deal with the money, and with above all dignity, human dignity. That's the most important. If there is no dignity and there is money, something is wrong. It has to be the other the other way around. So this is what I'm doing. Uh, this is why I I what was brought to Pakistan uh, by a great friend of mine is Mr. Mohammed Swahil. And in fact, he's my my protege. In I, I'm I'm I took him for the PhD, so he's working with PhD under my surveillance, and we we, we develop a very good relation, very good relation. He's, so it's it's being a wonderful uh, friendship, and research also. All right. So now I want to tell all these people uh, who just joined us uh, just to explain that uh, who we sitting with. तमाम दोस्तों को यह बताना चाहता हूं ये जो पाकिस्तानी जिन पुर्तगाल में है कि हमारे साथ इस टाइम डॉक्टर जोजे कालाजान बैठे हैं डॉक्टर साहब ने पाकिस्तान के मेरा ख्याल चार चार विजिट अब तक कर चुके हैं ये तो हमने कहा आज हम ऐसे पोर्टुगीज को अपने साथ लेते हैं वीडियो में जिन्होंने पाकिस्तान का विजिट किया उनसे पूछते हैं पाकिस्तान के बारे में कि उनका पाकिस्तान का विजिट कैसा रहा पाकिस्तान के लोग कैसे हैं पाकिस्तान का कल्चर कैसा है तो इसलिए हमारे साथ डॉक्टर साहब बैठे हैं और इसके अलावा ये प्रोफेसर है यूनिवर्सिटी में लुसोफोना में तो जो भी स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ पे बैठे हैं अभी हमें देख रहे हैं अगर आप एजुकेशन के हवाले से किसी किस्म का आप सवाल पूछना चाहते हैं एडमिशन के हवाले से यूनिवर्सिटी के हवाले से किसी कॉलेज के हवाले से कोर्स के हवाले से फी के हवाले से तो आई थिंक ही इज द राइट ही इज द राइट पर्सन टू स्पीक विद So, uh, Dr. Jose Kalazan, why did you visit Pakistan? What was the main reason, and when did you uh, visit uh, for the first time? Okay, um, I'm researching on the, on the, on Pakistan history, old history from before 2000. In fact, it's the Indus Valley Harappa Mohenjo-Daro culture for many years, for more than 30 years. I'm researching and. I will release a three volume study on the Harappa writing system this year. And so I I always dreamed to go to Pakistan. I never could. I, I know India very well. I stood and I lived in India and I was studying as a researcher and lived in Varanasi University for a time. I was um, I received a scholarship for the Indian government for my achievements on the Indian culture study. So I, was, I I was there living, but I never could reach Pakistan because during that time uh, the relations between both were even worse. So it was not safe for me to go to Pakistan and again to return to India and so forth. So far, I would get problems. So I had to wait for a better moment. And then the moment came when Pakistan um, Uh, academics and Ministry of Culture organized the first international conference for Silk Road. Was dealt in Hazara University near the Karakorum, and I was the only Portuguese there. Uh, there were different people from around the world dealing and holding this uh, conference <clears throat> about different issues from history, archaeology, anthropology, sociology, linguistics, politics. So it was really wonderful very very good uh, conference and it was a big challenge for the pakistan government because this was the highest point where uh, when the the the, the taliban uh, were fighting in the north of pakistan 
So each conferences like me got three bodyguards. Each one of us got three bodyguards. Was a, I, n I never experienced this in my life. I felt, well, I must be a very important guy to have three bodyguards, one in the morning, one in Did the you ever have uh, any bodyguard in Portugal? No, never. But I got some spies spying on me uh, from America and Israel, yes, because I... Well, I like Asia and I like France uh, and they, they are not the same friends. But I don't see the difference. For me, friend is a friend. Doesn't matter if it is a, an American uh, or a French or Israel or Iranian or Pakistan. People are people. But I don't think like that. I don't know why. I look for the dignity. That's all. So I, I never got a bodyguard, no. Just in Pakistan. So... It was in one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one uh, guarding my uh, my sleep during the night. So it was nice, and uh, it was a very important uh, experience because I was the one we were talking about certain uh, issues, and th those issues were just mesmerizing the ministers and the high officials from military body. Uh, is in the, I didn't know that. Really, I didn't know what was going on about me. They were talking about him during the days. I didn't know. I was very relaxed. And last day of the closing, the um, the, the 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 head of the the university just called me to close to make the speech of the closing of the the conference. <laughs> so you, you can imagine all the ministers and generals and everyone around the world was there. Is what am I going to tell them? So I, I, oh, in a, I took one minute to talk. I didn't know what to say. I was frozen. And then I just uh, got this thought, okay, open your heart and say anything. And I just, I was observing myself talking. It was a very strange feeling. I let just my, under, my unconscious to talk. And what came out was even worse. Worse for me because I never, I never thought to to talk about that. I thought about Pakistan and the Central Asian relations. And what I said was it gave such a deep mark on all them that they called me back. <laughs> and that's why I, 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 when I told this to uh, to Sohail, uh, he, he, he grasped me to Pakistan. And so I talked with all the politicians. So my view on Pakistan didn't change a bit since then. And this is what I told is this. Your future, the future of Pakistan, is not on the front of you. It's not in the ocean. It's in your back. It's in Central Asia. Because you come from there a thousand years ago. And going back is to be a partner in the Silk Road. Don't be fooled. Don't let the other partners take your share. You have a historical share in the Silk Road. You have to fight for it. And you have to fight for a Central Asian community. You are not still a part of it. You have to create, like Portugal created the CPLP, Lusophone, Portuguese-speaking countries. You have to create also a community of Central Asian community with a common share on Silk Road. The Chinese are more ahead because they have more people, more money, Russians, etc., Iranians also, and Pakistan. You are waiting for what? So you need, you really need, what do you need? You need new scientists, new economists, new diplomats with a broad view, okay? This is a very important issue. And you need to develop strongly a space program. It's not a military program, it's a space scientific program. You need it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. So uh, let me stop you here, and uh, because we have a, uh, a question for you from Mr. Qasim Sultan, he's saying, uh, Salam all of you, I have, I have already talked with Professor Kalazan. He said he will reply my question in live conversation. I will repeat my question to Sir Kalazan. Kindly guide me. How to convert my educational background in Portugal 
I got diploma in associate engineering in electronics technology and have L1 food safety and awareness from UK. Kindly brief me, please, how to convert in Portugal. Best regards to Mr. Suhail Bhai, who provided me his WhatsApp. Really appreciate. Okay. Um, for those who want to make the equivalence on diplomas and formation, uh, the best uh, is if you have a master or a doctorate or a postdoc, it's much easier. If you are just a graduation, it's not so easy. I got these problems with some friends, some Pakistan, they had only uh, uh, graduation. And that was a problem because he, he, we have a lot of papers and documents and diplomas from Pakistan. All of them have to be stamped by the Minister of Education in Pakistan. And all of them, one by one, has to be translated. And if you have hundreds of papers, translate each one is costly. It's very expensive. So it's better to wait and make some master or to close the graduation and to apply for a master and, and then uh, um, doctorate and uh, to, to make the equivalence. If you have a, a, gradu a high graduation, master or doctorate, and you want to make a, a equivalence for Portugal, if you make your formation in Europe, there's no problem at all. Because all the universities are recognized within the space of European community. Doesn't matter if you are an European born or if you are a Pakistani. It's very easy. Okay? If you are a Pakistani, you just went to make a master in Germany, for instance, and you come to Portugal, you make you want to make an equivalent, you have to show your passport. Okay? You you have to, to make the, the inscription in university. And then you have the, 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 the permission to stay in Portugal, okay, and to follow your studies. So uh, it's very easy. Uh, my university for Mr. Mohamed Sohil, it was very easy to do it. He, he hold the master from Germany, he came to Portugal, he, easily, he asked the, the permission to live in Portugal, he was in, he made the petition to go in master, in doctorate in my, by my university, and it, everything was settled. It was no problem. Some universities in Portugal, they even don't ask to recognize the diploma by the, 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 the embassy in, in, in Berlin, for instance, or in Paris. This is immediately, there is no problem. But it depends from university to university. It's rather simple to this kind of a procedure. Mm -hmm. Just if you come here only with a graduation, then it becomes more difficult because there is a lot of paper. A lot of paper to be translated. Huh? That's the point. That's the point. So um, it's very costly. So it it is. It, there is no problem um, uh, for this friend. You can send me some samples by P a PDF, and I will ask to the secretariat of my university on your case what they will do. Uh, but first. Uh, you have to tell me what you intend to do really. If you want to follow master or doctorate, or if you want to follow to to look for a job, of course, for a job, all your documents has to be um, equivalent for uh, under the scope of the the the, the guild. I mean the the order of engineers, for instance, huh? because the order of engineers have steadily. Uh, some points and uh, some path on the recognition for uh, other foreign engineers, but the procedure is very common. It's very simple. You just I need more information for what you intend really to do. I will look for you uh, for the so right solutions and to support you on this on this kind of uh, um, equivalence. I don't know if I answered you. I don't know, but. Uh, just uh, we, we can keep contact and we, we'll see. In Portugal, we have something like 37 universities in between state and private universities from the north till the south of with different kind of courses and offerings. Um, so it depends where you want to live, what you want to do. Uh, generally, 
the Portuguese population is decreasing. We are becoming too old, and the older people are dying, and very few are born. So the inner Portugal, the villages inside Portugal are getting um, void of people. We need young blood. And I'm not allergic, not at all, to receive foreigners and, 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 and immigrants from outside of Europe. Because I'm Portuguese and in my blood runs three kinds of mitochondrials. One from Morocco and Jew. In fact, I'm from a Jew uh, tradition family. Not Jew from Israel. Eh? <laughs> okay, I'm from Sephardi uh, background. My grandmother was a Sephardi. Uh, I am not a religious uh, uh, Sephardi guy, but uh, I, 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 I receive as an heritage the genes. That's why I can do a lot of things at the same time, you see. But I know, and we all know, that the, the true Sephardi and true Jews come from the north of Pakistan. I don't forget it. I have learned this, this lesson the first time I was in Pakistan and didn't know it. And this is something... When was uh, your first visit in Pakistan? When? Yeah. When? 2012. Ah, 2012. So it's nearly eight years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, regarding any university which is uh, good for electronics technology, uh, yeah. do you do any recommendation? Yes, the Institute of Technology, uh, Institute of Technology of Lisbon is a, a state university, is one of the best in the world, okay, for uh, computer uh, engineering, but also physics and general engineer is very good. Uh, just to tell you that the, the high director of UNO, Guterres, he came from there, okay. And all the great, great physicians came from their engineers. Uh, you can account among uh, Portuguese engineers, one of the best engineers of bridges. And they, are formed, they were formed by the Institute. So we are really very good, very, very good. So the Institute of Technology uh, from Lisbon is the top, top, top. I really could recommend uh, for those who want to follow and have a very good high uh, graduation in Western with the same quality of, of MIT, just go there. Because if you go there and you get a diploma and you want to go to MIT, they accept you. Oh, you come from Lisbon, okay, no problem. No problem. Because many Portuguese from there went to MIT. Okay? So if you want to go to oceanography, Science of Oceans, you go to the Faculty of Science of Lisbon or you go to Algarve, the very south of Portugal University. They are specialized in oceanography and they are very good. Oh, yes. I think it's the best holiday destination. So I would recommend because I lived in Lagos for seven years. Ah, so. So you know, you know, you know, it's very, good, <laughs> it's very, very good. And people yeah. are nice and the weather is very good. And it's a good university for oceanography. So, so he could be todos dias praia praia muito bonito. Don't tell that because everyone will go there and uh, <laughs> no one in the north. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I will uh, continue with this uh, because first we ask uh, about uh, uh, university regarding electronics. Uh, uh, the next is uh, uh, Mr. Fasel Katana. He's asking. Uh, what about MBBS? Uh, you recommend any university regarding MBBS? Which uh, one is the best university in Portugal? Uh, for business? MBBS, it's a medical. Uh, the, oh yeah, uh, the medic, medical. Well, uh, we have, we have through, uh, three, the three best uh, medical schools in Portugal are from Lisbon, Coimbra and Porto. They are really good. Really, What's really, the name really. uh, in Coimbra? Uh, Medical School of Coimbra. Medical School, okay. Uh, the Medical School of Porto. Escola de Médicos, how do you say that in Portuguese? Uh? Escola Médica. Escola Médica de Lisboa, Escola Médica de Coimbra, Escola Médica do Porto. 
Porto, right. We have, we have been, from these three schools came the best uh, researchers. Uh, also in, in, in the very top technologies on, uh, um, on biomedics and, um, and uh, in, in previous times, of course. But in virology, in bacteriology, um, they were very good. Now, for those who want to, to be in biomedics, which is different, we, you have a doctor. Okay, doctor is, is a is a technician of health. Okay, a biomedic, bio doctor is a researcher. Is a researcher, researcher on medicine and health. It's different. It works mostly of the time in labs. Okay, researching life. He knows the same as a doctor. He's a doctor, but he specialized only on research. For this, I would would I would uh, would uh, suggest the um, Universidad Nova. Universidad Nova. Uh, they are very good. Universidad Nova de Lisboa. They are really good. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, very good. One of my best friends is a biomedic, and the guy is really he's a genius. <laughs> oh, well, sometimes we spend two or three hours talking about biomedics and physics. The guy is, is uh, outstanding because he's not only a scientist, he's a, a writer, a poet, and a painter. So very rarely we can have these things all together in one person. See, so he is a humanist. And Portugal, we still have this, uh, this tradition of humanism, which is very rare in all Europe, very rare. And we want to keep it alive. Uh, Mr. Kasim Sultan, don't think that I have missed your question, uh, but I'm just uh, continue and uh, make uh, uh, just want to make our uh, uh, conversation a little bit interesting as well on the same time. Uh, but I will continue with the question of Mr. Faisal. He's saying uh, in, uh, in MBBS course uh, curriculum, aspiring doctors not only earn about everything in and around medical and healthcare. Uh, industry, but they also learn the ethical uh, practices, get to intern with the hospitals and the volunteering yes. projects. Uh, check table below for subject in MBBS course. We have uh, the be uh, the two best um, uh, schools of health are from Lisbon and Oporto. Um, the helpers in hospital, they are very good. Uh, law degree in English. Okay. Uh, if you want to make a master or a doctorate in law, is in English. There is no problem. Uh, we accept you speaking English, although it should be uh, good if you take some lessons in Portuguese to not uh, lost yourself. But on this level, uh, all professors speak English and are able. To, to, to give a lesson in English. I myself, I have students in Portuguese. I, I teach in Portuguese. And I have students, I teach by video conference to, um, uh, to, to students living in uh, Yugoslavia. So every Saturday, I give lessons in English to people in, the, in Yugoslavia, which is a wonderful experience. It's really very good. So, I and other colleagues are able to do this. Doesn't make any sense today, a professor, to not be able to speak in English. Uh, well, come on. But, 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 don't forget, the Portuguese language is the fifth more spoke in the world and was a lingua franca during the 16th, 17th century in the Far East. If you want to make commerce, between Malaysians, between Thailand people, and you have to speak a little bit of Portuguese. So this will come again. This will come again one day. Yes. <laughs> it will be a part okay, of- Okay, good luck. Uh, good luck, uh, Mr. Professor. Uh, the next, uh, Faisal Saab, he's saying uh, uh, he's Portuguese, so he can do in uh, Portuguese. That's not a problem for him. Uh, so I will, Go back uh, to Mr. Kasim Sultan because uh, he wants to know something. 
Uh, he's saying I have uh, one more question for my younger brother. He's doing his diploma uh, in civil engineering and he has done diploma in building architecture. I want uh, to bring him here for his further uh, higher study, like bachelor study. Can you give me us? Can you give us uh, information about how to get admission? It's free as well. Uh, I, I I don't understand. Does he have a graduation or does he not have a graduation? Okay, Kasim Sultan sahab, please batayye. He already has done his graduation or not yet? It takes a little bit time because. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, because this is important. Because he, if he doesn't, he didn't finish the graduation. He has to learn the Portuguese. He has to follow Portuguese uh, lessons. Yeah, that's one of the difficulties. If he does speak Portuguese, that's okay, no problem. Even if he's not perfect, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, uh, of course, uh, as I told you, Adil, uh, before I, I prepare a paper in English with all the detailed information so our fellows can understand, follow it, and even after to reading the papers. If there are questions, right. we come again and we clarify everything. Right. Okay, so, I send you in PDF and you just... Yeah, yeah, we will share in our group so anybody yeah, could uh, download yes, it yeah. or uh, whoever needs it, so that's not a problem. So kind of you, uh, Mr. Professor. Uh, the next is... Uh, He's saying uh, his diploma is uh, equal to graduation, okay. so it's the same thing. Uh, so if he has a graduation, he needs to to ask for an equivalent. Yeah. Uh, he made the graduation where in Pakistan or in England? I think uh, from Pakistan. Uh, so then we have this problem. Probably are some dozens of papers to be stamped by the minister in Pakistan. That's then what to, you started with. Uh, then to translate it in Portuguese. Right. And then to be recognized by the Portuguese embassy in Islamabad. This is which is really... closed uh, from last two years. So uh, yeah, well, yeah, I know that, and I was teasing the, these guys here, and I was so fed up and mad that I decided to create the institute on my own of diplomatic affairs for the Far East and Lusophone countries. So we can't work on this kind of facilities and accelerating the process of reform on the portuguese diplomatic representations where they should be and they are not what's wrong uh, uh, mr kalazan uh, what's wrong with the portuguese embassy i don't understand it's more than it's i think it's more than two years I don't uh, the embassy I don't... is not uh, embassy is not fully functional and uh, uh, i think uh, if they uh, start working so many people uh, even the Portuguese government and Pakistani uh, government, they could have a lot of business from both sides. Uh, yes. I don't understand many students, uh, many businessmen, and uh, many things uh, we could do, which uh, just because of the closure of embassy, uh, it's impossible to do anything. Yes, it, it is. It is a problem. And did you try anything to reach a uh, high, highly official uh, uh, from Portuguese government? Did you try something? or? Uh, yes, I did try it. And I did try, I, and I brought with me Mr. Uh, Mohamed Swahil, so he was a witness. Uh, and even the, the, the officer with whom I talked, he was not feeling uh, um, comfortable with my questions because he didn't know how, what to answer. So I think that they, they don't know what to do. I think that uh, uh, normally the excuse is there is no movement enough to keep open the embassy. What does it mean? You want commerce? We can get the commerce. I'm one of the founders of the PAC uh, uh, Commercial Chamber of uh, uh, between Portugal and, and Pakistan. It exists. We, I and Mr. Mohamed Swahil and other partners, we created the Chamber of Commerce, Pakistan, Portugal. So we can deal the situation. Just to, so just to, if, just if, 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 wait, wait, if Pakistani students and immigrants can come, and they cannot use the embassy in Islamabad. Of course, they have to use in the in, where in the Dubai or somewhere. I don't know. And this is being used for a long time. 
So as far as my, uh, my concern, I will continue to tease the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Lisbon and to inquire them why you don't buy, uh, open it. And I have to do it every month. So till they become fed up of me and they will open. Or they want, they want to be released from me because they are fed up of me and they will choose me as an ambassador. We don't hear about you anymore. Go away to Islamabad. I don't care. That would be good because I know what to do. But of course, I, I'm not, I don't have the requirements under their eyes to be uh, nominated as an ambassador. Maybe as a cultural attaché or consul. Uh, I don't know. But I know, what to do. I know what to do. Regarding this uh, embassy, Kloya, just to let you know, uh, I have sent a couple of emails uh, to President Office, to Prime Minister Office, uh, to Secretary State, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. So uh, I have been received a, a reply regarding my emails uh, from Prime Minister Office, uh, from uh, uh, Antonio. You mean Portuguese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the Prime Minister uh, Antonio Costa. Ah, okay. Uh, but he, he in the answer, end, uh, he answered you. They answered me. I have received a couple of emails uh, which are still with me. But so what we, did they say? What did they say? I don't understand. Uh, they didn't say anything. Uh, just uh, keep holding, keep holding. And uh, yeah. I wasted a lot of time uh, just doing effort if I could do something. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, till now, there is no results. Uh, okay. and, let, let and, and, and one more thing I would add here. Uh, in March, uh, our neighbor country, India, they welcome President Marcelo Rebelo. Yeah. So I don't understand uh, what's wrong with uh, uh, Pakistan. Uh, we could have a very, very good relationship uh, with Portugal. I mean, uh, I'm talking about my country. So what's wrong? Uh, why they never... Uh, okay. uh, you, you want an answer? Yes, please. Okay. And this is only my humble opinion, okay? Right. It's not an official statement. Okay, is a uh, is an uh, is an opinion of a professor of international relations and an orientalist, right? Okay, only that, nothing more. So don't publish my opinion because it's just my humble opinion. It's personal, right? It's already live. Everything uh, just to let you know, uh, many people are listening and it will stay online. So yeah. I don't know how you say official and unofficial while we well, are. Uh, no, it's, it's just my opinion as a citizen. Okay. Yeah, you could use you. as an academician. That's all. okay. Okay, that's good. So, uh, when from the time of partition, Pakistan was the first country to open the embassy in Portugal. Just later on, India opened the embassy, but first was Pakistan, and from then pakistan helped portugal in many international affairs with india giving us information and so on so it was a very good relation and we never got better relations till today never never but we with india we got some frictions because of goa daman and Diu. we know the story was not happy for portugal not because of ordinary Portuguese, but because of the dictator Salazar. He didn't want to give the colonies back to India. Even Uno was telling to this, this prime minister, please do it when you have time to be friends. Otherwise, it will be too late. It was too late. So India invade between commas, God, Daman, and Diu, and Portugal was really humiliated. So from then, Portugal, because of the dictator, dictator, he cut relations with India, diplomatic relations. And then it came to 1974, Portuguese revolution. And we wanted democracy. We were the last European country, together with Spain, of course, to come to the democratic uh, system. So we should recover our relations with India. Didn't happen. Mistake. 
Mistake, mistake, mistake. We should have done immediately. We didn't do it. So it, this happened only in 1993. Come on. Why did Portugal wait so long? So then we did it. And because of this first approach and solving the internal problems between the two countries, uh, there was a treat of peace and good understanding. Okay, 93, it's very recent. And under this treat, Portugal agreed to send to India a group of researchers as a, 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 as an action of goodwill. And the same from India to Portugal. India did it, and Portugal didn't. So Indian government was so... So what, what, what happened? Why Portugal and the Minister of Foreign Affairs did answer? Again, this kind of very strange behavior. So by the initiative of the Indian government itself, through the embassy in Lisbon, they were looking by themselves in Portugal for someone to bring to India under the protocol. This is crazy, yeah? And they found someone. They want more, but they didn't find more. They only found one guy. So they phoned him and said, OK, can you come to us? The ambassador wants to talk with you. So this guy was trembling because he thought that he was, he was giving conference about India. And he thought that uh, he, he, did, he, he did said something that smashed the relations. So he, at that, during that night, he didn't sleep was trembling, was afraid. So next morning, he went to the Indian embassy to talk with the ambassador, and the ambassador told him, well, this happened. Uh, the, your government didn't tell us, it didn't give him a, a list of scientists, and we were looking in Portugal, and your name is the only one pumping out as the only specialist on Indian affairs. So they sent him to India to live there. They paid him a salary. They gave him a library. They gave all the facilities, and this guy was me. Okay? And there are more specialists on India, but no one, no one was chosen. They chose me. So I was there. I live in Varanasi. I took my research on Sanskrit and archaeology. It was wonderful. I received a salary, and I never received that salary in Portugal till today. Okay? So I am very grateful to India, of course, and to Pakistan, because you both believe on me, on what I, I was saying, and I'm still saying the same things. So if I was wrong, they, you would not call me back. But you are calling me back. So something is useful on my words and my actions. So again, why? Why is this? So India is dealing here with a great fragility. They are afraid to lose the dignity of their history and their culture. But that is not true. India is well known in the world. The thing is, they are too traditional and they believe that Hinduism is above Islam. Neither the contrary is true. No one is above no one. No one is above no one. Please, when we go, in fanatism, doesn't matter if you are from this or that religion or this or that party, is wrong. Fanatism is not good, neither at the right, neither at the left. It's not good for no one because it will destroy the human dignity in any way. So they are in a, a level of still recovering from the British colony. And now the problem is the prime minister, Portuguese prime minister, is from the Goan, Goan tradition. Yes, uh, he's an Indo European country, Indo European guy. His father was from Goa. Yeah. So he doesn't want to bother and to, uh, oh, well, my family is from there. What am I going to? So it's better to not give too much facilities to Pakistan, otherwise I will have problems. I will get problems even in Goa with my family. 
so well okay if he doesn't do it and he cannot do it why we do we will not do it you and me there is no law against it we can do it but even if there is no embassy there can exist a consulate and the consulate can can give the support, can can give the, the stamps and the, uh, the permission it's, a, it's a just a violation of uh, basic human rights you know because i know personally how many families uh, uh, they were unable to see their uh, loved ones and uh, they waited like more than one year just to do something and now they are doing a little bit but not uh, as frequent as it's supposed to be yeah. uh, anyways uh, i move to next question uh, uh, he's asking thanks for replying my question yes the uh, significance of a portuguese language uh, is a uh, Undeniable, uh, but if no university offering law in English uh, in particular, then it would require to learn a good level of Portuguese in order to study. So, uh, his writing is an opinion, I think. The next is I have, sorry, yes, please. Yeah, of course, if you want to make the graduation in law in Portugal, you have to learn Portuguese because all the lessons are in Portuguese. But if you, you go on further studies on law, then english that's okay however don't forget that even the civil code the commercial code huh, they are print in portuguese huh? and and more you pakistani when you study uh, law in pakistan you have the law from islamic tradition but you have also the law from anglo-saxonic tradition we don't follow the anglo-saxonic tradition not at all. Okay, it's different. Uh, it's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. The next, uh, uh, Mr. Colors and uh, uh, Mr. Fessel is uh, saying, I have done bachelor in medicine and surgery, and further I want to do master in public health. Is this good for future? How you see the future of uh, uh, bachelor in medicine and surgery? Bachelor, not if you want to go further studies, you do a, a specialization or a master or a doctorate. You may do it, you may do it, but um, you have to know exactly what you want to do. What you want to do that is very important. Um, this is one of the things. Second, you may contact the order of doctors in Lisbon and to ask them directly with your position uh what should you do they will tell you directly if he if he's advised to come and do or not because uh portugal strangely and i don't agree with that but strangely they are too tied to a high marks to go in the course of medicine well, just to give you an idea uh, they accept students to go in medicine from the first year if they have 18 or 19 in a scale of 20. Oh, come on. We know by statistics that the best doctors are those ones that they are mild. <laughs> 12, they, they gave a mark of 12 and 13. They will become the best doctors because the most intelligent, they will not get it. They, 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 they took good marks, but then it doesn't work. So we know it. So why they are putting just so what happened a few years ago is that the young people, they decide to take the course of medicine in Yugoslavia. And when they finished, they were so good, they don't want to come anymore. They stood there as a doctor. They said, well, it's much better here. So I'm not saying here is not good. It is good really, and we need doctors. But uh, the marks, uh, it's better if you have already a graduation and then you can go on a master and you are a doctor, a doctorate. Yeah, that is very good. Biomedicine is really very good also. And uh, Mr. Kasim Sultan, uh, he's asking, uh, is there any age limit to get admission? Uh, uh, he's writing, I think, 30 years. There is no limit. You can have 80 years old and you still be will be admitted. No, All right. no, no okay. problem. So I, I want to move towards uh, your uh, uh, 
uh, trip to Pakistan, what was the best thing uh, you saw in uh, our country? Oh, uh, open heart, friendship, trust. Really, it was wonderful. I Every time I go there, I feel really at home. It's really very good, very, very good. Uh, so uh, really, people are saying, "I'm oh, the Taliban and terror." What the reason? I have problems in my country. I was in Pakistan. I never got problems. Even I, even I, 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 I met three three Taliban. They were very nice people. What? Yes, yes. One had a Kalashnikov. <laughs> yeah, he was in he, 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 I, I just I, one day. I, let me tell you. Okay, I was in the conference and I it was a break. <laughs> During one morning, I was fed up of my bodyguard. I will run away. And I went away from me. I just want to go to the fields and feel the karakorum. Oh, where is really, that's what I want. I was on a, on a trail in the middle of the fields. Green, everything was green. Oh, wow, beautiful. I was just walking. And suddenly, really, on at the end of the trail, I was someone coming on my side. But it was very small. It was very far. And Which I area it was? Uh, Azra, near Hazara. Uh, you are talking about Hazara. We say Hazara. Hazara, okay. Hazara. Yeah. Okay. In so, our language, it's Hazara. In Portuguese, it's uh, Hazara. Okay. Hazara, <laughs> okay. So I, and, and at the middle, I then I saw that it was a guy with a long beard, with a long skirt, and he was wearing something on his shoulder. I thought it was a sack, but it was, it was, a, it was really a, kal a Kalashnikov. And it, when I saw who was the guy, I said, oh, I cannot turn back because if I turn back, he will run. So I was just looking at the birds. Ah, oh, beautiful. Bob. I was just turning around and trying to be invisible, just invisible. But I was not invisible. So he really went to me and said, hello. Yeah, hello, who are you? Who am he was I? speaking. He was what? speaking English or uh... English? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, he, okay. He, he is speaking English. Uh, no, not That's a good English. Not a good English. But he speak. He understood. I was not from that that place <laughs> because I was dressed very well dressed. It's now this guy is not from here. Who are you? Oh well. Uh, uh, when I I was trying to think, what am I going to say? He said, are you an American? No, no, I'm not American. No, 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 no. Uh, you are an English. No, 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 I'm not an English. French? No, Italian? No. And he was saying a lot of, uh, I said, no, no. So, what are you? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Portuguese. A por what? Por por what? Por Portuguese from Portugal. Portugal, a country far away. Oh, Portugal. So, you know so you are a friend. I'm, you know, of course I'm a friend. Oh, no, my dear friend. Yes, I'm a friend. I, so I, he knew about Portugal. Yes. And he said, really? Yeah. And he said, well, Amazing. Well, no, no. Uh, just remark this. You are a friend. I didn't know what he mean about. And I said, oh, of course, I'm a friend. Of course. I just oh, okay. uh, Because we don't forget. You were the first ones to recognize Palestine. So you are our friend. Oh gosh, I win my day. He, he, you didn't say anything about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Finish, <laughs> finish, finish, finish conversations. I win my. I have to go back to the university. Bye bye. Okay, but yes. So this saved my life. You see, it is and true. Did you, did you learn true. any? Did you learn any language in Pakistan? No, I didn't have time for. <laughs> Any but I have, to learn, I have to, to learn Urdu, of course, or Kashmiri, any, or uh, I don't know. I don't any know. word you learned, like you say bon dia or uh, hello or something? Uh, not really. Uh, if you say, I remember. Like, salam alaikum. Uh, well, salam alaikum is not Urdu. Okay. <laughs> salam alaikum is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Arabic, Arabic, but uh, of course, we people say that uh, to say hello. Okay. It's our uh, greeting, uh, you know. Yeah. 
I, I'm or, joking uh, a lot of times with, with the Soa Hill. I'm saying TK, TK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Shukriya, thank you. And shuk uh, shukram, shukram, thank you. Shukram. Shukram, shukram is yeah. Arabic. Uh, in, uh, we say Shukriya. But Shukram is, Shukriya is also in Hindi. Yeah. Hmm? So, so the good news, uh, our boss is uh, also watching us, uh, Mr. Muhammad Suhail. So I wish he could join us uh, uh, our conversation, but he's watching us for the moment. Yes, he's a watcher. Okay, it's a watcher. And uh, but, uh, did you? Okay. Yes, please. Hmm. I will send you the papers with all the uh, questions. Everything is answered there. If in between the lines you want something more, with that paper, with those papers, you can make your your questions in private or in minute detail because then you have a, a map where to uh, to deal with you tried any pakistani food during your visit yes and i love it very much it's very good i like very very much what and was the best you, thing you eat uh... uh and i may tell you for your pleasure that i prefer 100 times the pakistan food than the indian food I, I I got problems when I'm eating in India. I got problems, but not in uh, in Pakistan. It's really good, really really good. Lamb, lamb, and the vegetables and spicy, but it's a, it's a special spicy. It's not so spicy in India. I don't know. Uh, it's different. It's really very tasty. I like it very much. Any any names you remember now? If you have eaten rice or uh, bread yeah, or uh, bread, any curry. So bread. Yeah, yeah, all that. I have tried everything. Everything. You remember roti? Roti, yes, roti. Yeah, <laughs> roti and the, the rice and uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And what about uh, the traffic in our country? Our drivers and traffic. I I found it very well. I was used to living in India. Please. Uh, I prefer so for me uh, in Pakistan is very different. It's very safe. It's okay. No problem. No problem. No, it's it's totally different. Believe me, it's it's it's, it's, it's different. Okay, you have the same stock, you have the same tradition for thousand years, but the partition have done some differences. Uh, of course, the education also make the difference. Islam as a special tradition on uh, education on on um, health issues um, I'm not saying that the Hindus are not so clean as uh, Pakistan I don't want to go on these kind of things but there is a difference there's a big difference and uh, well I, I I think that this detail is being very important during the time of quarantine and we can see the difference about the numbers between Pakistan and India. Also because of the health issues, public health. Hmm? Um, contamination is less in Pakistan, not because of the population number, but because of the health issues. How Pakistan is taking care of it. So India has this problem was a problem already from the time of Gandhi and will be always till India understands that he cannot run always as a fanatic politician uh, way of life that will turn in a turmoil. There is no peace. Uh, Mr. Kasim Sultan wants to know about uh, the university fees, etc. If you know anything. Yes, I know. And a, all this information will be disposed on the PDF documents I will send. Everything oh, okay, it's also everything. including with the P. Yes, everything is there. If after that you still want more detailed information, then you know what you are talking about, and I know what you are talking about. Right. So I prepare everything so you could um, feel free to have time, take the paper in your hand and say, oh, well, I, I, this is what I want to know. And then, if you want more specification, that's okay. So I made, the, I, I made the homework for you. Who was the best police uh, politician you met uh, in Pakistan? 
Oh, yeah. A very nice guy. Uh, he came to Portugal recently. Was the... Um, uh, the... Oh, what is his name? Uh, the governor of Punjab. You are talking about uh, Chaudhary Mohammed Sarwar. Yes, really. Wonderful guy. Very clever. Very, very clever old man. Uh, very open mind. Very relaxed. He can be in any place in the world. Was a very nice uh, person to talk. Uh, he, he, he's, he's here. Okay, that's him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's why him. I shared your pictures uh, with him. the open job. Yeah, so he, he came to Portugal. We, well, we really, it was wonderful to be with him. So he knows, he knows. He, he, I, he's a kind of man we don't need to explain everything to him. Just tell one word towards, he knows already. He got the picture. Okay, I know. Uh, I'm from it, the same city, you know, Faisalabad. Oh, Faisalabad. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that uh, the actual president, minister um, from, from uh, uh, Pakistan, he chose the right people. He's a very brave man because I know he has a, uh, there are a lot of enemies. And I know what is going on uh, behind, behind the, the, the curtains between India and Secret Service. I know all that. It's my business. I work with that. So, and I, I think that it's, the time is coming to stop with that. And this is what I told in Kashmir. And this is what I told to the ministers, and even in Pakistan embassy here, about Kashmir. Pakistan has to think about Pakistan himself. If you want a free Pakistan, you have to give the power to the people. Because you are fighting for any Pakistan, India and Kashmir, any Pakistan, any Kashmir, any Pakistan, at the end of the fight, there will be no population, no yeah, that's correct. Uh, no animals and no forest yeah. because of the climatic changing. Yeah, and that's one correct. One day you will have just sand and stone, nothing more, even neither water. So you still keep going with this fight. It's, it's no use. You have to come together, make a joint venture, and transform Kashmir in a kind of Switzerland. Well, people to people, uh, there is no problem. Uh, there is no problem with Indian of people and Pakistani people. I know people. that. I know uh, that. Everybody wants uh, to have peace. Uh, yeah. Doesn't matter what religion, uh, what country, what race. There is no problem. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, again, uh, this triangle, this lover triangle, <laughs> uh, a triangle of lovers, three. India, Pakistan, China. That's the triangle, the border triangle. India is afraid of China. China doesn't want to, to, to give away for India. Uh, uh, India is afraid of Pakistan because Pakistan become a friend of China. And uh, come on, uh, this is stupid. Doesn't make any sense. So, if Mr. Transform... Kasim Sultan is asking, uh, is any possibility to make any appointment with uh, Sir Kalza? Well, if you want to make an appointment with me in Islamabad, we have to pay me the trip. If you, no, want, he's... <laughs> if you want to come to Lisbon, I will be available anywhere in Lisbon, but not All right. because the university is closed because of the quarantine. Ah, okay. Okay. Where are you right now, Mr. Qasim Sultan? Are you in Portugal or uh, are you in UK or Pakistan? So, I'm waiting for his reply anyway. Could you okay. tell me about the uh, uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Fawad Chaudhary? Who is a minister of science? Yes, uh, it, it was very good. Uh, he's a very open mind, very reliable person, very open. I believe me. In contrast with the Portuguese politicians, European countries, it's much better to talk with your uh, officers. Uh, they are very sensitive people. They know what they are talking about. They are very open to all kind of ideas, and it's very easy to go in dealing with these people. 
So you're actually, your government is doing a transformation, a big transformation. And I think because of this openness, openness, really openness, India is afraid. What they are doing? No, they, this is not true. This, they are not doing it. They, they are thinking in second way. No, 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 it's really. You have nothing to lose. You have to make the difference. That's all. Nothing more. Uh, it, it is really like that. So I think that India should not be afraid. If India will show the hand, doesn't matter if it is one hand or if it is the Pramudra, okay? Namaskar. If it is just that, it's enough. Pakistan will open the arms. There is no problem. The enemy is not Pakistan. There is another hidden enemy. And the hidden enemy are the landlords, the warlords. They don't want to open the hand, open hand from their control. You Mr. know what Kaladan, I, uh, you know what I am talking about. Yeah, yeah, I completely understand. Uh, but I, I have a very, very bad news for you that Mr. Qasim Sultan he lives in Lisbon, so he cannot offer you any Pakistan trip. Oh come on! Okay, <laughs> I, <laughs> I have to offer offer him a tea. Okay. You are welcome. So uh, we can meet. Yes. Just tell me where and when I go to you. Okay. Uh, it's a very, very nice and great uh, gesture from you that you are going to visit him. Yeah. Not you are asking that he will come to you. So, so kind of you, yes. Mr. Kalazan. Yes. So, so are uh, you planning to go again uh, to Pakistan? Uh, is any future planning? Uh, yes. As soon as I can. Because I, I have uh, uh, some some plans to some ideas to develop there, which I do really want. Because in Portugal I cannot do it. Aside my my academic work, I I made a formation on ethnobotanics in the University of Coimbra, lab research on ethnobotanics, and uh, I want to implement some ethnobotanic uh, enterprise in Portugal. And believe me. Pharmacies do not allow me to do it <laughs> because I want to give the power to the people, meaning to uh, take this eth ethnobotanic knowledge from villagers and villagers and to transform in medicine, folk medicine, to give to the people. Of course, pharmacies don't want it. Of course not. But then my good friend, Mohammed Swahil, told me, why do not do it in Pakistan? You think it's possible? Of course it is. And it is. So I want to to do something together with uh, with um, uh, with my partners there in Kashmir and to build a university on ethnobotanics and to give job for the villagers and to recover the ethno uh, ecological sites of special plants, medicinal plants. And do some something with it. Who knows? Uh, Pakistani immigrants and students in Portugal also can do a kind of enterprise using this kind of medicine and selling in Portugal. Because alone, I cannot do it. I'm not allowed to do to do it. But if we import from Pakistan, we can sell here. It's another way to do the things. Then they will believe and they will let it go. I alone cannot do it. So I'm dealing with different ideas and I'm inviting people to work on. You see this wonderful lady you can see there? Yeah. Soraya, Dr. Soraya, it's a great friend. I, I, I really love this woman very much. It's a wonderful heart. It's a brilliant mind on chemistry. Is my partner on this on this uh, um, this thing with Kashmir, and I hope that we can do something for good. All right, uh, Mr. Kalazan, thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm very you. grateful to you, and I will send you right now all the PDF documents. Right, and I'm also very, very thankful uh, uh, to Mr. Suhail. Yeah. Uh, he helped a lot uh, to do all this uh, for today's uh, live video. Okay. So, hope to see you very soon. I don't know, in Lisbon, in uh, Pakistan, we yes, never I know. So. 
Mr. Adil, it was, it was a great pleasure to be thank with you. Thank you very much, sir. And, and thank we, you, everyone. And Sorry, we keep, please. We keep, we keep our contact. We will, definitely. As, as we talked in the beginning, I will send you some information also. And uh, thanks to everyone uh, who are watching okay. us. Thank Thank you very much, Shukriya Ji. So, it can be a live session tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, we will see today, uh, tomorrow. Okay, then. You all keep your attention. Don't forget to keep your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Khalazan. Assalamualaikum and shukram. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Allah Hafiz Ji.